Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. As we approach the end of October, which is the end of Pitbull Awareness Month, I want to shoot another quick video to expose some more truths about pit bulls, and in this case, about pit bulls and bite statistics. Nowadays, there are so many websites that have all these dog bite statistics and bite fatality statistics, and today I'm going to use a particular website and a certain set of statistics that are actually anti-pitbull. The hardest part about talking about this topic is when we're talking about dog bites or worse, dog fatalities, people are getting injured, people are dying. So it's really hard for me to talk about this when I'm trying to not necessarily prove a point, but just provide truth and accuracy in the actual statistics that goes into dog bites and dog bite fatalities. We can never lose sight that people are getting injured and there are some people, a small handful of people that are actually dying from dog bites. And that is a tragedy. That is not something we should ever take lightly. So for any family that has lost a loved one or a friend to a dog bite, I, I can't tell you how sorry I am. I don't care what breed was involved. It's a tragedy and my heart goes out to you. I, I can't imagine what that has to be like to go through. So that being said, let's get to the nitty gritty. I want to talk about dog bite statistics as it relates to pit bulls. And there are a lot of websites out there. There's a lot of statistics floating around. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, historically has been one of the most prominent websites and organizations to get dog bite statistics from. And I can pull out statistics that kind of help me in my agenda because, you know, I'm pro pit bull, I'm a pit bull advocate, so of course I want to present pit bulls in a positive light. But that's not my purpose here today. My purpose here is to provide you with truth and accuracy. And in that truth and accuracy, you're going to see that pit bulls are not more inherent to bite than any other dog, and they're not more dangerous than any other dog. The fact of the matter is, is that any large powerful dog that bites someone poses a greater risk than a smaller, less powerful dog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present you with, I think it's 2018 bite statistics from a website called Dogs Bite, okay? And this website is one of the most anti-pitbull websites that are out there. So I'm actually going to take statistics from a website that is anti-pitbull and I'm going to expose the truth of these statistics and how they skew statistics to perpetuate the horrible plight that pit bulls and pit bull owners face on a daily basis. What it's going to come down to is simple math. That's right, simple math is, go and again, I'm taking their statistics. These aren't mine. These aren't statistics that I Googled to help support my agenda. These are statistics from an anti-pitbull website. Before we get into the statistics, let's do a brief overview of the state of dog bites in the United States. What's really sad about this, you know what we need to be focusing on? We need to be focusing on bite prevention. How can we prevent dog bites? How can we educate and promote more responsible ownership? How can we teach our children the do's and don'ts of interacting with our dogs? How can we help dogs acclimate more to human and domestic life? We shouldn't be picking out dog breeds and trying to demonize them. That's not going to solve the problem. Just look at anywhere there's been a breed ban in the United States. They don't work. Dog bites don't go down. They don't get reduced. And I won't even get into the whole dog bite industry. Yeah, that's right. It's an industry. The average dog bite claim in the United States is like 40 grand. I know someone who got bit on the thumb. Bit on the thumb. Bad bite, don't get me wrong, I'm not minimizing. I'm sure it was very difficult to deal with. 125 grand. The dog bite industry is an industry. And if you're curious how much of an industry, I think it's like $700 million a year. $700 million a year, the dog bite industry. That's terrible. It's an industry. That's horrible in and of itself. If we focus more on education, and we focus more on training and socialization for pet dogs, we're going to minimize these risks. We're going to minimize the amount of dog bites. We're gonna keep people safe. And let's not forget the most common victim of a dog bite are children from five years old to nine years old. No legislation is going to stop that. You know what's going to stop that? Education and responsible pet ownership. That's what we need to be focused on. 
Dogsbite.org is one of the most anti-pit bull websites out there. They gather all sorts of data to demonize pit bulls. And I'm taking this information right from their website. This is not any biased information that I'm presenting to you that's going to support my agenda. I'm giving you their information on how they demonize pit bulls. Here, they clearly state the legal definition of a pit bull is a class of dogs that includes several breeds, American Pit Bull Terrier, American Staffordshire Terrier, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and any other purebred or mixed breed dog that is a combination of these dogs. Progressive legislation also includes the American Bulldog, a related breed that shares the same blood sport heritage of bull baiting. So basically what they're saying is, is that they judge a dog by its looks and they gather statistics of the pit bull based on not only a handful of breeds, but any mixes of those breeds. Sometimes people refer to them as bully breeds. So here's, here's a small list of dogs that would fall into that bully breed category based on a dog's looks. And I mean, you can just check out that list. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. But according to dogsbite.org, any 40 of these dogs mixed with any other dog on the face of this earth would be considered a pit bull. I can't even do the math on that, it's so complex. It would be 40 times 400 times something else, I don't even know. I mean, we're talking, it would be tens of thousands of types of quote unquote breeds that could be mixed together based on all of these breeds that they're saying are technically pit bulls. Yet every other bite statistic they show clearly specify an individual breed but not pit bulls. The most prominent organizations, what do they have to say about bites or dangerous dog and breed specific legislation? The American Kennel Club strongly opposes legislation that determines a dog to be dangerous based on breed. The American Veterinary Medical Association, dog bite statistics are not really statistics and they do not give an accurate picture of dogs that bite. Invariably, the numbers will show that dogs from large breeds are a problem because big dogs can physically do more damage. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, they don't even consider breed anymore when they do bite statistics. The CDC re clearly recommends against using breed as a factor in dog bite prevention policy. And they state any dog of any breed has the potential to bite. The National Animal Control or Association. Breed specific legislation may create an undue burden to owners who otherwise have demonstrated proper pet management and responsibility. The National Research Council. The trend in prevention of dog bites continues to shift in favor of multifactorial approaches focused on improved ownership and husbandry practices, better understanding of dog behavior, education of parents and children regarding safety around dogs, etc., etc. So here it is, right in your face from dogsbite.org, the most anti pit bull website there is out there, right? Here's their statistics from 2018 for date, fatal dog attacks by breed, okay? 72% of fatal dog attacks were by quote unquote pit bulls. Look at the next category, mixed breed. Three mixed breed dogs were responsible for fatal dog attacks. Well, by dogsbite.org definition, their definition of a pit bull is technically a mixed breed dog because they say it right on their website. But when it comes to bite statistics, it doesn't support their agenda. So they separate pit bull, even though there's 40 some odd dogs that are potentially pit bulls and any mix of those 40 some odd dogs would be pit bulls. But for every other mixed breed on the face of this earth, they call it a mixed breed. They don't label it a pit bull. And you know, then you have Rottweiler and then you have Mastiff or Bull Mastiff, which is technically the same dog, Dogo Argentino. And ironically, a Mastiff or a Dogo, by looks, if it was a mix, they would probably consider that a pit bull. And this is nothing against these other breeds on this list. And then there was 3% of four different breeds of dogs, but they don't list those breeds of dogs because it doesn't suit their agenda. But clearly 26 quote unquote pit bulls involved in fatal dog attacks in 2018, okay? We don't know what breeds of dogs were actually involved in those attacks. And this is strictly going off the information on dogsbite.org. And remember, these aren't my numbers. I took these numbers off of an anti-pitbull website. 
they clearly illustrate how misleading and really how untruthful they are. I mean, they're basically just lying to you. They're lying to the American people to support their agenda to, to be completely anti-pitbull and completely demonize our beloved breed. Here is yet more information that proves pit bulls don't bite more than any other dog, okay? You clearly see this all over the place and you can Google this yourself. Pit bulls are two times more likely to bite than golden retrievers. Is, is that true? Is that factual? So they're saying that for every three dog bites, two are pit bulls, one's a golden retriever. I guess that's what they're saying there, right? Okay, well, let's do the math. Okay, there are, are about 750,000 golden retrievers in the United States. And the estimate of pit bulls I have here of 3.6 million is probably a low estimate. There's probably closer to 4 million pit bulls in the, in the United States. But for the purpose of showing you this image, let's say there's you know 3.6 million pit bulls compared to 750,000 golden retrievers. There are five times as many pit bulls in the United States as there are golden retrievers. How is it possible that pit bulls are two times more likely to bite than golden retrievers when there are five times more pit bulls in the country than there are golden retrievers? That's like saying that four-door sedans are involved in more car accidents than any other car on the road. Well, I would think so because there are more four-door sedans than there are any other car. And again, that car example is an arbitrary figure. I don't actually know the statistics with car accidents, but you see where I'm going with this, okay? So if there is more of something, of course there is going to be more incidents surrounding that, whatever they are, good or bad incidents. So again, this is yet another statistic that proves pit bulls are no more inherently inclined to bite than any other dog. Here are statistics from the American Temperament Test Society. They're a very well-known organization that does temperament testing on all breeds of dogs. And here I listed a handful of what people would refer to as pit bull type dogs. And I also listed a few really common family dogs, the German Short-Haired Pointer, the Golden Retriever, and the Portuguese Water Dog. You can clearly see that the American Bulldog, the American Pitbull Terrier, the American Staffordshire Terrier, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, all of which would be considered pit bulls, they score just in the, in the same range as these other common family pets. In fact, they score higher than German Short-Haired Pointers. And the American Bulldog, the American Pit Bull Terrier, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier score higher than the Golden Retriever as well. Well, there you have it. I gave you all the information and you can decide for yourself. I'm not trying to push any agenda. All I did was offer you information, accurate information at that, as accurate as there is at our disposal. And look, I'm not ignorant. I understand that we have a problem with dogs in America, okay? And the root cause of those problems walks on two legs, not four. So for all my pit bull lovers and pit bull advocates out there, please share this video with people who always say, oh, pit bulls are more inherently dangerous than any other dog, or pit bulls bite more than other dogs. They just don't. Statistically, they don't. Now, do we have a pit bull problem in this country? Yes, I, 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 I'm going to admit it. Yeah, we do. You know why? Because there are so many irresponsible breeders. There are irresponsible pet owners. I could go on and on about the irresponsibility surrounding pit bulls. But guess what? It's not isolated to just pit bulls. There is irresponsibility surrounding all breeds of dogs. But a pit bull bites headline is a heck of a lot more intriguing and sells a lot more stories than a mixed breed dog bite. And let's not forget one glaring fact about pit bull bite statistics. They're based on the appearance of a dog. If it's big and muscular and has a blocky type head and it's athletic looking, it's going to be called a pit bull. Even if there's no pit bull in its DNA. Breed identification is the single biggest problem with dog bite statistics, breed labeling, and breed legislation. You can't just go off of what a dog looks like. And I'm sorry to say this, and pun intended, but most people wouldn't know a pit bull if they got bit in the ass by one. And for all my fellow pit bull lovers and advocates out there, thank you so much for all that you do for our beloved breed. Keep up the great work. Make sure that you are responsible. Remember, we pit bull owners are held to a higher standard. We have to be more responsible than other breed owners. And that's okay. We should embrace that responsibility. Our dogs deserve it and the breed deserves it. And for all you pit bull haters out there, I really don't care what you think because you don't deserve the love of a pit bull.
And for all the families out there that have been victims of tragedy from dog bites, um, you know, again, my, my sincerest sympathies and condolences go out to you. Well, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And hey, if you like what you see, you want to take a peek around my channel and uh, consider subscribing. Click that bell so you get notified when I upload new content.